<laughs> so here I have graphing uh, y equals ax squared. So what I'm going to do in this case is we have y equals 1 half x squared. So therefore, we can just simply say that a is going to equal 1 half. Now, all that A is going to tell us, now A is going to determine a couple things, which we're going to talk about later. But A will is going to determine if our graph will open up or down. But also, it's going to have some effect on our graph as far as stretching and compressing. But let's just go and take a look at how to graph a problem like this. Now, remember, as we've talked about, when I have an equation in the form of y equals ax squared, we know that the axis symmetry is going to be at 0. And that's going to become very, very important. Now, um, we have an x-axis and a y-axis. All right. So when going to look at graphing this, now what I've done before is I've chosen our values. And we always look at knowing what the axis of symmetry is first. And since my equation is in y equals ax, um, ax squared format, we know that the axis symmetry is at 0. So therefore, we always start at 0. And then we choose two points to the left and two points to the right. Now, what I've done before is I've chosen negative 1, negative 2, positive 1, positive 2. But not always are those the best points. Sometimes you might want to pick different values. And I'll tell you, when you're dealing with fractions, a lot of you, you know, you're going to want to stay away from fractions or you know, you're eh, fractions. So what I recommend is, you know, if I'm going to do a fraction, and especially in this fraction, I'm going to look, I notice the denominator is by 2. So therefore, I'm going to try to find values that when I square them, it will be easily divided by 2. So therefore, I don't really like using negative 1, but I'm still going to do it so you guys can see it. But I'm going to choose another number negative 4. And the reason why I'm going to choose negative 4 and positive 4 is because if I use 3, which would be odd, well, 3 squared is 9. I don't really want to do 9 divided by 2. Then I'm going to be trying to convert to decimals and so forth. So it's helpful when looking at fractions is try to choose numbers that you can easily divide by your denominator or take your denominator and divide it into it so there you can figure out the problem. But anyways, we'll just do a table of values. And you can create as large of table of values as you like to. I like to just kind of limit it to two points to the left of axis symmetry and two points to the right of the axis symmetry. All right. So again, remember, we need to now find out our x values because they set a parabola is a set of all points, x coordinate and y coordinate. So therefore, if I'm going to choose the x coordinates, I now need to figure out what are the y coordinates for this specific equation. So to do that, I'm now going to plug in. I don't know why I put parentheses there. Plug in each one of these values. And I'm actually just going to do this first, just so I can get them out of the way. And then what we'll do is we'll do the math so we can try to knock this out here as quickly as possible. And one thing to notice about the table of values that I did choose, I did choose values that were exactly the same, except one being positive and one being negative. Now again, you could choose any points to the left and any points to the right. But it's also very, very helpful to choose values um, that are exactly the same, just one side of the axis symmetry and one is not. Because then what you see is, since they're on both sides of the axis symmetry, they're going to reflect about each other. So anyway, let's just go through this. So we have negative 4 squared, which is positive 16. 16 divided by uh, 16 times 1 half is positive 8. Here I have negative 2 squared, which is 4, positive 4. Positive 4 times 1 half is 2. Negative 1 squared, which is 1. 1 times 1 half is 1 half. And so you can see, see by using negative 1, now I'm having to graph a fraction, which you know it's not bad. There's nothing wrong with it. But a lot of times, that's where sometimes mistakes can happen, is when we're trying to work with our fractions or decimals. So it's best a lot to you know, use our, as many whole numbers as we can. So 0 squared is 0. 0 times 1 half is 0. 1 squared is 1. 1 times 1 half is 1 half. And notice how the rest of these are going to mimic exactly what I had up here for the negative. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 1 half is 2. 4 squared is 16. 16 times 1 half is 8. All right, so you guys can see how these, what's happening is, as I go from the left, I'm getting closer to my axis symmetry, and then I'm reflecting again. So let's go and plot these points and see how that shows up on our graph for our parabola. So I go over negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, up 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then I have negative 2, comma 2. So negative 2, up 2. Then I have negative 1, up a half. So negative 1, but I'm only going to go up halfway. Then I have 0, 0. All right, 1, 2, 3, 4. And what you guys can see is now, even though now I'm going in the positive direction, but what I'm doing is I'm going to be plotting the exact same y coordinate. So I can as easily just kind of mimic this like this. And you can now see the graph 
it's going to go. And as it keeps on going out farther and farther wide, it's going to go up to infinity. So what we discussed when we had a graph that's in the form of y equals ax squared, we know that the vertex, which in this case is the minimum point, right? the vertex is either the maximum or the minimum. In this case, it's the minimum point, which occurs at 0, 0. We know that since it's in this form, we know that the axis of symmetry is now going to be at x equals 0. right? You can see this dotted blue line is going to cut the parabola right in half, where the left side is symmetrical, equal with the right side. And we can say that the x and y intercepts, wherever the graph touches or crosses our graph, is going to occur at an intercept. And for the x and y intercepts, it's exactly the same. It only occurs at one point, which in this case is our vertex, which is at 0, 0. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph in y equals ax squared form. Thanks.